Hello folks, today I've been drafting a, an article for the Stately blog which involves a 101 on how to build state charts from scratch and I wanted to do a video companion to that and this is what we're going to do today. We're going to go through the steps that I take when I model state charts and going from no state chart to a state chart and we're going to do that by modeling the Twitter create tweet feature up here. And I think we're going to model just a little bit of it, I think. Um, it depends how far we get. Now, what I like to do, my very first step, is when I'm thinking about modeling a state chart, is I like to think about all the events that my state chart can kind of have. And give me two seconds while I pause the notifications. So my list of events, it's kind of me thinking, OK, what are the possibilities in this app? What can be done? And really what we're looking at is just kind of this area here. We want this latest tweet section and only the section there and probably not even this little bit up there. So just in here. So focusing on this little area, what can be done there? Well, we know that we can type in um, tweet input. So we can type in there. We can tweet, so we can press tweet button. Um, and I'll just add events up here. Next up, we can um, we can change the uh, the privacy settings there. So we can press um, open privacy menu button. We can choose uh, one of these selections so that we can um, choose privacy setting. We can also click outside of the privacy toolbar or tooltip as well. So there we can click outside it. So click outside privacy menu. Uh, when does that escape work there too? Yeah, press escape key. Um, what else can we do? I'll just pull this out a little bit. What else is there? So there's obviously all these options down below. We can probably kind of uh, deal with that as they come. Oh yeah, and we can also add a new tweet as well. So add um, new tweet to thread. And this one, wow, this gets complicated, doesn't it? So now we can press, and um, yeah, like, do we have these as two separate? Oh my God, there's discard thread. There's another mode, there's a modal on top of a modal. Wow, okay. So maybe we, uh, we cut things off a little bit, or in fact, what I'm gonna do is just brute force this myself. Okay, I think I figured it out. We've got this add new tweet to thread button, which appears here. And then when that happens, then we go into another, um, we're in like the thread modal where we can close the thread modal. And I think then if you've got unsaved stuff here, then you can, oh, of course, add another tweet to that. Or you can also navigate backwards. Sorry, I'm discovering more. So uh, a focus input, I guess. And wow, this is a very complex piece of UI. I can close that so I can delete um, a tweet from thread and close this as well. And when that happens, then I can either be in the save or discard. And I can discard it there. So I could, I've got the confirm close thread modal, cancel close thread modal. So lots going on here. So now that I know all the possible events, Step two is to work out possible tasks that result from this. So we need to start thinking about like um, what, what things do we want this UI to do? Because currently it's sort of like just a bunch of events and it doesn't really have any have anything to do. So tasks, um, this is where I like to think about my, um, my actions and services basically. Uh, and tasks really involves like side effects of the application. So we're going to need to save tweets to database. The database. So at some point, that's what we're going to need to do. We're also probably going to need to sort of maintain this tweet. Um, so like save tweet in um, local state and save tweets in local state, I think. And we're probably going to have to clear the tweets from local state because I can see like I'm, now that I've got the events kind of all listed, I've got these sequences in my head where we like we add this up, then we add another tweet to it, and then we close this, and now it's cleared from the local state, which is kind of interesting. Um, okay, so we've got our events and we've got our tasks. Now, step three is we need to start thinking about how our state chart gets instantiated. What's the life cycle of our state chart? We know that here our life cycle is um, 
when we visit the home page, it seems like, yeah, when we visit the home page and the user is signed in, then as, for, for as long as you can see your feed, then it's on the page. If you go to a different page, if I go to notifications, no, it's not on the page. So it's only on the page for as long as home is the URL. Okay, if that makes sense, I'll just write that down. Okay, great. We've got our life cycle. Uh, one thing I didn't do about the tasks is we actually need to separate these into services and actions. Now, services, what they are, are kind of like tasks that take a long time. So they take like a, a length of time or tasks that we care about the ending of them. So we want to read some data from that or do we, we care if they error, for instance. And I can see one that's definitely a service here, which is saving the tweets to the database. So saving, um, that's definitely a service. So I'll put this in services. And the other type are tasks that you can just kind of fire and forget. So these are going to be actions. And I think both of these are actions because when we save the tweets in local state, we're just really talking like it's just JavaScript to JavaScript. You know, it's, there's not a high likelihood that that can fail. And the same with clearing tweets from local state. This isn't like local storage even. It's just saving them in JavaScript memory, basically. So it's very unlikely that it's going to fail. And they take no time at all. They're synchronous operations. So, and I've, I've written an article about this as well, like the differences between services and actions. So I'm not going to go too far into it here. But I know that these are, these are the services and these are the actions. Like this, now that I've got my services, services themselves can spawn events. So we now know that services like um, save tweets to database, to database, it can either fail or it can succeed. So I like to call this error and done. So when we're done saving the tweets to the database, we actually need to like probably return to a different state or something. And when it's errored, uh, it's likely there's another state there that where we'll need to show the error or get the user to retry. So might as well add a sort of retry event that we can add there. So you can see that the services themselves have an impact on the events that your state chart can kind of hold. So, okay. Now that we've got the events, we've got the actions, the services, and we've got the kind of idea of the life cycle of the machine. Now what we need to do is work out the very first state, the very first moment that the thing is on screen and what kind of events it's waiting for, what services are running, what actions need to happen. So, oops, very nearly deleted the video. For that, what we're gonna do is jump to this, which is our visual editor. And we're gonna call this a new tweet. Um, new tweet machine. And we've got some states here that I'm just going to delete. So our new tweet machine, if I just move this over to the side here, um, it's a bit bigger. This is now our very first moment that it's on screen, it's empty. So I'm going to say that. So uh, tweet is empty, tweet input is empty. And we may like change this as we go along. This is just the first thing I'm seeing. And what we need to notice is kind of what's, um, what in our list of events now, what can we see that's possible in the very first um, moments when this is on screen? So from the moments that it's on screen, we can type in the tweet input. So let's add that as an event. And I'm just gonna, what I did there is I'm just gonna make it a self transition for now where I grab it from the side and target itself. So this is going to be type in tweet input. Now, when we type in the tweet input, probably what we want to do is we've got our list of actions here. We probably want to save the, the state of the tweets in local state. So to do that, I'm going to go in the panel over here and add save tweets in local state. Because when we kind of type in the tweet input, we then have access to the new um, new value of that input. So I can say, wow, cool. And that's interesting. What you can see there is that the tweet button then becomes available when we have something in there. So we've got the tweet input is empty. And what we have then is there's a new state there when the can basically is ready to tweet. So or rather tweet input has value. And then two other events become possible. We can kind of press this like we can press the tweet button so we can tweet or send tweet. 
and we can also um, add tweet to thread. So you're starting to see that we've got now, there's this new state that we've come across. And what it looks like here is that we get from this to this by doing this event here. This is why it's so important to have the events first because they give you the kind of roadmap of where you can go and what you can do in your state machine. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change the target to tweet input has value. And this is interesting though, because it doesn't always do that. So if I were to type in the tweet input and type something empty, then it would um, kind of, it grays out. So we've actually gone back to this state. So what's gonna need to happen there is we need to go to the tweet input has value state sometimes, and sometimes back to the tweet input is empty. So what that makes me think about is grouping these two together and having them sort of inside a parent state. So for that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just create an idle state. And I'm thinking of the word idle because later on, like when we press like add tweet and stuff, then this sort of turns into a modal. So maybe we can even call it like no modal open. And then I'm gonna just take all this stuff and put it inside the no modal open. And I did that by copy and pasting that. So that's gone a little bit crazy. I think there's something funny in the code there. But if I just tidy it up, you can see that it's we're now inside the no modal open state. And now, now I've got to think about my event here. And my event, uh, so I'll just discard that. My event here is type in tweet input. And where is that possible? Like in what states can I do that? Well, I can do it here. I can do it in the tweet input is empty state. I can also do it in the tweet input has value state. In fact, I can do it any time the modal isn't open. Like for now, let's imagine that's what it is. So what I'm gonna do is gonna take this and I'm actually gonna apply it to the parent. And that type in tweet input here, it now goes from the no modal open um, and it goes into tweet input has value, but I'm gonna add a guard here. So I'm gonna say if um, is, uh, what should I call this, is adding value, or if value has length greater than zero, then we still wanna save the tweets in local state and we wanna go there. Otherwise, or else, we wanna to go to tweet input is empty, and we still do want to save the tweets in local state. So whatever happens, we still wanna save the tweets. So there we go, we can actually simulate this. We can say if the value has length greater than zero, then we go here. Otherwise, we go to uh, tweet input is empty. I'm intrigued why that isn't working, but... Oh no, yeah, we're there. Oh, we're there anyway because it's the initial state. Got it. Okay, cool. So that's one event down, the kind of... This sort of initial no modal open state. Now this add tweet to thread, um, what happens there is we get this kind of like modal open state where we have the thread modal open. And I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna target that. So thread modal open. And this is gonna sort of, like this is a whole kettle of fish now because let me just pull that over there so it looks good. Um, and I'm gonna just sort of leave that there and sort of leave this with a to-do on it because that thread modal open, that's sort of scaring me a little bit and I kinda of just wanna figure out like the basic stuff. So without, without doing the threads first. So we've got no modal open. Now this send tweet, currently it's doing nothing, right? We want really to go to a, if I just, let's tweet something out, shall we? Say hello, like that. And we tweet and it's like that. So there was a loading state in the middle there. If I just delete this, move my face, thank you. Um, there was a loading state in the middle. There wasn't a modal open, so we were still in the no modal open state, but inside that no modal open, there was a loading state. So we probably need a sending tweet state. Now, in that sending tweet, if we target that uh, sending tweet, what's gonna happen there is we now come to our list of sort of tasks here. So we've got save tweets in local state, clear tweets from local state. And we've also got this save tweets to database. So that's the moment that we need to do this, right? We have an invocation and we're gonna give it a source of save tweets to database. 
And here, this sort of loading state is where we can think about what happens when it fails and what happens when it succeeds. So what happens when it fails, I'm just going to click and drag over to here. Um, probably what we need to do is we want an invocation error event. So this tells us that the save tweets to database thing has errored. And we're probably going to need to show like, I wonder what actually, it's pretty hard to mock like a, uh, a error state here. So I'm going to just, I'm not sure what the behavior is. So I'm going to show like uh, show error toast or something. And like this might show like a little dialogue that just sort of pops away after a second to say, you know, this broke down. So we've got our error state. And what's going to happen when we're done then? So what we noticed when we were done is we actually went back to the tweet input is empty state, which I'm just going to move over here for clarity. And that means we go over here. And in fact, it does it automatically save tweets to database, the tweet input is empty. And we're also going to need to perform the action on our local states to just clear that out to say um, actions clear, uh, what do I call it? Tw clear tweets from local state. There you go, save that. Okay, okay. So that means if we simulate this, we've got our tweet input is empty. We tweet and then it's got um, a value. Or we add some stuff there and it's got a value. Then we can send the tweet. Then it's sending and we show a loading spinner or, or it's sort of grayed out there, I think. Then if it errors, then we go back to here and show an error toast. Otherwise, we send the tweet again. Then we go done, save tweets to database, and the tweet input is empty. Nice. Um, and then when that's done, then we clear the tweets from the local state as well. So there we go. We've modeled kind of part of Twitter's, um, uh, Twitter's kind of interactions here. We're using all the tasks that we put down. We didn't even get close to like all the events and sort of uh, and like all of this sort of extra states that come up when you add threads. But this shows you kind of like how, you know, the way that you would carry this on is you would take this and you would just start running with it. So this thread mode open would get pretty complex, I think, but you still get to capture all the other functionality here and this doesn't need to change. And in fact, this save tweets to database, clear tweets from local state, all of those actions and services can be reused when you go back to the other thing. I wonder if there's any interactions we've missed here. Oh, there is, which is when you press escape, when your tweet input has value, something opens here. So this discard tweet, if I make my face smaller. So here uh, we want a discard tweet modal open. In fact, I'll pull that out here. In fact, let me model this quickly and then I'll show you what I've done afterwards. Okay, for this, what I've done is I've actually changed the um, the sort of title of this to writing single tweet. This was modal, uh, no modal is open. But I think actually it's cleaner if we say, if we say this is like the writing the single tweet section. And then when you add this, then it's writing a thread, you know, because this has a lot more to it. Um, so what I'm gonna, what I've done here then is when you add in a tweet and the value is greater than zero, then the tweet input has value and you press escape and then you say, you press the escape key and the discard modal is open. So there we can either cancel, which returns us there, and then there's no actions that happen there. It just returns us back to that state. So you press escape key again, and you can discard. And if you do discard, then you clear the tweets from your local state. And your back in tweet input is empty here. So again, just by gathering the kind of like uh, the base events and understanding what's possible, I can really test my application and understand what's going on and build a proper state chart from it. So for this then, I think that's as far as we're gonna go. Hopefully that's given you a really good insight on how to kind of really start structuring your application and structuring your state charts. I find this absolutely fascinating. And as you can see, we've built already built something that's very robust that we can just put into an application and it will work. So thanks so much and I'll see you again soon.